Flavi, how are you feeling? Have you learned lots of things? You know what has happened to your brain uh, since uh, you entered this room and sat here for hours? It has created something called neurogenesis, meaning for every little bit of information that you learned, something new that you had never heard before, your neurons fired and they wired together and you learned something, which means that at physical level, your brain is different from the brain you had this morning. Does it sound like a weird thing? Something has happened to the world of technology and science. And I have to admit, it's been something caused by my own people, the AI people, the artificial intelligence scientists. And the thing is that the media, the large corporations, the pseudo-academic institutions, they proclaim that the more we develop machine intelligence, the less chances of the human race will have to survive and to flourish and to really have a future fit for humans to live. Let me tell you something. That is the biggest gulp Kool-Aid that you can drink in town. It ain't going to happen. So I'm going to demonstrate to you why not. The future is not about solving problems with IQ or computational muscle, but creativity and cognition. You know the difference between intelligence and cognition? Huge. Intelligence is sheer IQ. Can you do numbers in your head? Thank you, I have a calculator. Cognition is about perceiving reality and understanding how it works and then learning from that and building a construction in your head as to, I now understand this. It is the basis of science. Science, scientific endeavor began when we ask ourselves, what is this world we're living in? And we set ourselves to discover what made it work, why the laws of nature function in that way, etc., etc. And what is AI? AI is basically a very well-written program. That's about it. If I use mathematical algorithms, I'll call it machine learning. And it's very useful. It's very useful when you have petaflops of data that you have to analyze. Well, of course you're going to get a machine to do that job because our brains were never meant to do that. Our brains are for other things. And then, of course, we taught machines to make predictions. And, you know, via mathematical algorithms, the predictions began to be like 98%, 99% accurate. And we thought, yeah, we're awesome. AI rocks. Let's tell everybody that AI is going to kill the world. And then someone said, no. The human brain is quite interesting. Let's make machines learn things like biological brains. And deep learning was born. Now, the simple way to understand what deep learning is, just like we have 100 billion neurons in our neocortex, ready to learn things, in deep learning, you don't write a script. You actually build reward functions, you know like when you teach a puppy to pee in the right place, you give him a treat? So you reward the machine program when it achieves a task successfully or satisfactory. So it's a function-based programming. And the machine, because it's a brand new little brain, it learns things like a child would learn how to solve a puzzle, and then the puzzle is more complicated and more complicated, and then all those nodes begin to be deeper and deeper and deeper as the machine expands its learning, just like our neurons expand, and we have neurogenesis, the synapses in our brain. And why am I talking about this? Well, because you can use AI as a force for good 
and for progress and for the well-being of society. Or if you're a very clever cat, you can use it for bad things, evil things. And this is the state that we find ourselves today. And still, nobody talks about the most exciting thing in town, which is the fact that we, as humans, are continuing to evolve at physical level. And you think like, oh, you mean that we are still evolving? Like one day we're going to have like six fingers in our hands? No, 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 no. This thing up here is going through the biggest renaissance ever. Why? Because finally, when we have the tools available to us, our ability to create innovation has completely gone exponential. Let me give you an example. In the first 14 years of the 21st century, we surpassed the number of innovations that it took 100 years in the 20th century to achieve. Just by 2014, we were like, kill you, man. Moving on. And who's behind that? People. People that use technology like a tool, and they create stuff. What propels innovation, what propels progress, is a human endeavor. And therefore, our brains are becoming more and more conscious of reality, and you know what? More creative. This is the magical word. This is the word that I get asked as a scientist when people say, but what's going to happen when we automate everything and, and, and the robots? And, and I'm like, where, where would I know where I'll be. I'll be creating. I'll be working. I'll be inventing more things. I don't know where you will be. Maybe with the robots. But Human cognition is the most misunderstood and unknown theme that there is right now in science. In fact, the science that studies the human mind and how it works is only 10 years old. Cognitive neuroscience. Why is only 10 years old? Because finally we have photographic evidence of how our brain is functioning. Like you can see an idea forming right on this side. Or for example, you know, when a person enters a room, within seconds, different parts of the brain light up so that you first recognize spatial awareness. This is a kitchen, and then you're going to move through it, and then this part of the frontal cortex lights up. Now we're seeing the brain in action. The brain at work is the mind. Remember those people that said, why can't humans only use 10% of their brains? Remember? Well, I'm telling you, more and more and more, we're using more and more and more parts. Our brain is alive, and we're becoming cleverer and more conscious of our reality. So, what are machines good for? Machines are very good at mimicking us. So, for example, we can teach machines to uh, paint in the style of the French Impressionists and take that painting to an auction house and sell it for half a million dollars. That was good. I think the painting looks like a dog's dinner. A child would paint in the style of a child and achieve the same effect. But it's nice. It's a good effort. It's a good effort. How about people that are putting grants into teaching machines how to compose in the style of Bach? Well, yeah, it sounds like Bach, but it's not Bach. And it's not because I'm saying it. If you, if you make um, directors, conductors, music people hear the two recordings, they know which one is the machine. But let's assume that in the future, one day, there will be a composer called R2-D2. Do we care? I don't care. Hey, load up your work on Spotify. Peace. When I worry is when AI is used for evil stuff. What is a good use of AI? 
Again, simulations. But this time, let's make vehicles lighter. Let's do simulations with exascale machines that calculate billion, billion calculations per second and see if we can improve crash mechanics, if we can improve thermodynamics, if we can even create a biomaterial with which to build these cars so that it will actually be better for the environment. Or how about teaching a machine with deep learning to identify cancer markers in blood samples? or brain tumors by analyzing thousands of photographic evidence in MRS. You are in a machine to check those pictures, not a human doctor. As we heard before, and by my own work, I tell you, those cute little eyes are very deceiving. You know that our ear is good and tactile, but something happens somewhere in evolution that these cute little sparkles end up deceiving us a lot. So you want a machine to do that job. AI is a tool, not something that will prevent us from continue to evolve and to flourish. And why is that? Neoteny. All animals have a baseline that allow them to evolve and survive. It's called curiosity. Curiosity helps us to do two things. Find food, shelter, and reproduce. But in humans, curiosity takes the shape of something very special, which is called neoteny. And it means that because humans are the only species that have teenage years, our curiosity is playful. It wants to know what's beyond, you know, with a sense of humor. We like abstract things. This is what we like, jokes. And what happens? What did we do with that? Anthropologists say that this is what got us out of the jungle. This is what made us venture out into the world, ask ourselves, what is that tree? Is it a tree? What is a tree? And also, what's beyond the oceans? And when we conquered absolutely every geographical horizontal shape that there was, we even went into space. Is what powers our life, neoteny, our desire to know what and how and why things happen. So the future is not about computational force, alpha goes zero kill the joy for all of us. Nobody plays that game. But it's a force brute game, win, lose. When the outcomes are binary, and there's a lot of data to, to be calculated, you want a machine. But the future is about solving problems with creative approaches that require not just our neocortex, but all the chemicals that happen in the limbic brain that actually create memories and allow us to then perceive realities in better ways, you know, like a subconscious level. The future is about creating oxygen in cities that will have 40, 50 million people, or mental health issues. Who's gonna solve that? Only creativity. And cognition, will be the name of the game, not intelligence, not force brute type A computers, but finding solutions that involve the abstract. Humans see the unseen. We can apply inductive and deductive thinking. The machines cannot do that. They go crazy. They stop functioning. You have to go in and find out what's going on. So what is my recipe to create superhumans? I'm going to share it with you. Number one, and there's only two things, you are a biological being, not a calculator. Connect with other biological things, nature, the animal kingdom. This is a forest in Japan. People go there to practice something called forest therapy, to actually release a lot of worries and let the trees look after that. 
You need that to reset your creative juices in your brain. And my personal favorite, cultivate your neoteny. Look at life like a child with humor, with eyes wide open, laugh. Everything is possible, go for it. Challenges, bring them on. Do not have a negative attitude towards whatever comes and happens in your life. Do not judge. Let it all come to you and smile. And smile like the nice mammal that you are. Let that brain be that brain. Look for creative approaches to everything you do because the machines will be dealing with all the boring stuff. So let's show the robots how it's done, shall we?